Well, here we are again. It's always such a pleasure. My name is Andrew, and I'm back. And welcome to my second review. This time, we're taking the plane trip to an exotic island. The eccentric Dr. Brain wants us to pay him a visit. So, pack up your things, and I hope you're not afraid of heights. Or math. <laughs> Hey guys, we made it. We're here. We're at the island of Dr. Brain and we're at the beach. We got the beautiful ocean and the waves, the nice sand at my feet. I'm having a good time. I'm happy to be here, but we got work to do. So let's get started. I have a map in my backpack. Okay, here we go. And the map says we need to head that way, right there. In fact, I see something right now. Let's go to have a look. Okay, we have a sign here, and it says, this is a polyomino puzzle. Place all the blocks on the blank wall to fill in the rectangle. Uh, it sounds like something we need to figure out before we can move on here. Hey, this looks like a kid game. You imbecile. <laughs> this is not just a kid's game. Published by Sierra Online in 1992, Island of Dr. Brain did, however, fall into my lap as a young kid on my family's old DOS machine. This game was leaps and bounds beyond other puzzle games I was used to on that system or even the Apple II. The atmosphere immediately pulled me in with its gorgeous graphics and soothing music. I knew I was in for something special. Dr. Thaddeus Egghead Brain, AKA Dr. Brain. Hello, is this thing on? As the story says, is believed by many to be the greatest living mathematical genius to date. We recently solved all the trickiest and twistiest puzzles back in his castle and have been promoted to lab assistant. Not all is fine and dandy. Dr. Brain tells a frightful story about being hit in the head with a large pink flamingo while working on his new project. As he awoke, he noticed his newly devised plans were missing. Even though he has memorized the plans, he still needs the specialized battery to complete his operation. Thus, our journey begins as we look for the required battery somewhere on his private island. This game seamlessly combines both the adventure game genre with a puzzle game wrapped up as an edutainment game targeted toward older children who need more virtuous games to play. You had best not do that, Avatar. To get back to that, edutainment, meaning an entertaining education game. Emphasis sometimes more on the education aspect than entertaining. Despite the cautious enthusiasm present in most gamers, when they load up an educational game, playing this game will not make us agonize in terror. The numerous puzzles make up the educational part here. Solve each one to progress to the next. The puzzles vary notably and will require a unique approach to solving as we move along. Upon finishing the puzzle, we are granted a trophy. Congratulations, you have earned a bronze visual pairing plaque. Like any good adventure game, we have an inventory. Move the cursor to the top of the screen to access it, just like in standard Sierra adventure games. A list of earned trophies can also be found here. To spice gameplay up, we traverse the world screen by screen. Each locale is beautifully drawn and evokes a lighthearted feel of island living. We move in a first person perspective as opposed to watching a character run about. Various objects around the game can be interacted with. 
the eyeball cursor will give us a text description and a hand cursor will let us poke or access an object. There's plenty of goofy reactions to check out, so poke anything and everything, even more than once. Let's go ahead and try clicking on the starfish here. Eco Quest? All right, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Other objects will initiate the next puzzle. We can grab items from our inventory and attempt to use them on things around the area. Lastly, we move from screen to screen by clicking on portals like a doorway to a hut. A retreat icon at the top will send us back to the previous direction. Island of Dr. Brain is actually a sequel to another title, Castle of Dr. Brain. Much in the same vein as Island, Castle of Dr. Brain is an adventure game featuring various puzzles. It's slightly less polished, but plays just great despite being a year older. Even so, it's still a recommended title if you're looking for more of the same after this one. Either one can be played first. Suits of armor and dusty weapons line the castle's dark hallways, filled with doors leading to unknown rooms. These rooms contain the bizarre collections and contraptions of Dr. Brain, ready to test your knowledge and observation skills. The music and atmosphere give it more of a creepy vibe compared to Island's beautiful open environment. My god, it's full of puzzles. Sierra Online improved on Castle's formula in every way possible to create what is the pinnacle of educational puzzle gaming. Some puzzles are literally puzzles. Since trying to fit oddly shaped pieces together to form a cohesive whole could get old fast, we'll be confronted with other ways to use our brain. Namely, the studies of science, language, art, and math. A sort of liberal arts collection to base puzzles around. Math dominates the varieties, and the challenges here go beyond answering cut and dry math equations. One of the early puzzles is the magic square, and it's a fiendish puzzle requiring you to plug numbers into a grid to have each row, column, and diagonal add up to a specific number. Another one asks us to draw graph lines to separate tiny little microorganisms under a microscope. Math as a subject encompasses more than algebra. Prepare for pattern recognition, logic sequencing, decoding, numeric planning, computer programming, and visual skills. These are easily my favorite of all the puzzles. They will offer excellent brain thinking to solve and get the best sense of accomplishment. As we play, we won't even know we're doing math. Decoding phrases by the bridge make excellent use of scrambled sentence structuring as a way of very basic ciphering. Tests of our visual acuity have us scope out a botanical garden to discover the carefully camouflaged animals. We will also be matching identical objects among similarly appearing objects, and find logical patterns in old computer parts to repair faulty equipment in the command center. The Tower of Hanoi is a classic planning math puzzle with a strong visual exhibit. It can take some time to figure out at first, but knowing the trick will let you solve it quickly. By the way, I should mention this book I've been carrying. It's called the Encyclo Almanac Shenariography. Did you get all that? That's what this thing is called. Anyway, inside it we'll find tons of information regarding all the puzzles here on the island. Let's go have a look inside. Oh, the Soviet Union. That's great. This book came with the game as a supplement to the manual and disc. It's no slouch either. 100 pages long. You gotta love these retro game books. You can see why they'd include this. The game's many subjects cover such a broad spectrum of knowledge, and without a cohesive book detailing each one, there's big potential for failure. Though, as an adult who replayed this game, I was able to finish it without glancing at the book or touching today's internet. I don't recommend going out of your way to find a physical copy of the book. As of now, there is no FAQ available, 
but it's an intuitive enough game to figure out on your own. To finish up the math section, more complex tasks will require us to plan ahead for completion with a bit of trial and error puzzling. These involve designing electronic logic gates and programming a robot to perform a series of predetermined functions. The Robot 1 has a mini-map, which kind of reminds me of turn-based 3D grid games like Might and Magic. We give the robot commands to go forwards, backwards, turn left or right, and pick up or drop off. These commands must be fully listed out before the robot starts. Just sit back and see how it does. Or doesn't. Any mistakes will require tweaking of the commands. I see you. Okay, to keep our interest and to avoid terrible oversaturation of the aforementioned math, Island of Dr. Brain administers language puzzles. Don't throw the calculator out just yet. There's still more opportunities for that little devil. It's time to delve into the delightful world of synonym apples, hominy homonyms, and anthill antonyms. The Apple Orchard presents us with Shakespeare verses which seem a little off. To write these, we'll pick apples with the correct word as a synonym of the incorrect one. As in, different words that can mean the same thing. They'll also rhyme with each other to give the user an extra layer of word choice. The Field of Corn and Anheel repeat this process with nonsense phrases and famous quotes from famous USA founding fathers and politicians. This time with homonyms, words that sound the same but confer different meanings, and antonyms, words that mean the opposite of what another word means. Sadly, we won't be able to use rhymes to check answers anymore. As we're playing, if we find ourselves dominating the puzzles, then we can alter the difficulty on the fly. In the options menu, we have a difficulty slider. Three levels to choose from here. Novice, Standard, and Expert. Novice truly is a novice level. The later difficulties do more than feel harder. New conditions show up in the puzzles, causing us to rethink strategies that worked so well on novice level. My recommendation is a first play on Standard. Any massive challenge can be changed in the menu at any time if you find yourself stuck even with the help of the book or internet. Replaying the game on Expert will offer new angles to work out after your first playthrough. Wow, this island is gorgeous. Although I keep hearing strange noises now and then. Anyway, look at me still talking when there's science to do. Mosquitoes! Oh. Yes, there is research to be done on the island. Familiar grade school science experiments show up here. Dr. Brain's spectrum analysis chamber provides a specific spectrum to be matched with a handful of possible elements. Run a sample of each one to see what lines up to the original. It'll take a combined sample to find the full match. Material analysis works closely to this one. Analyze objects like bullets, balloons, and silver earrings. Then, using hints provided by the machine, infer which elements compose the objects. If chemistry is not your thing, get ready to breed some cyborgs in the lab. An ideal child needs to be born from a pool of potential parents whose genome is displayed. Pick the correct parents and continue to crossbreed until this wunderkid spawns from the cold, hard, steely cyborg. Wait, what the heck is going on here? Hey, are you by any chance breeding monsters here? Jazz brings up a good point. Dr. Brain is breeding cyborgs. That's an organic organism with an artificially augmented body. I didn't know that. Guess I must be old news. And he's breeding them in the lab. Who makes up this intergalactic society, and how is any of this even possible or necessary? There's some serious stuff going on here, and before we continue, I need answers. Who would I know? Stop asking questions! Fine, fine. We'll let him go about his business, but I'll be damned if this doesn't end up very, very bad. If you can't beat them, beat them anyway! During the adventure, Dr. Brain will communicate to us through the walkie-talkie. He provides encouragement and approval as we make our trek through the island. I have just completed my latest top secret project. I would appreciate my battery uh, at your earliest convenience, of course. Though we never have him physically with us, 
we get to know him remotely and begin to wonder what this guy is really all about. What does he want the battery for? Why is the island shaking so violently? The way to learn about the story is to move on. The walkie-talkie also has a slot for coins. Entering coins will call up Dr. Brain at a specific puzzle to help us solve it. Closing up science brings us to the final subject of art. Any background in art history will give a huge boon at this point. Paintings by famous 20th century artists will need to be paired up with the artists themselves using art recognition. Art extends beyond the visual. Dr. Brain's piano beckons all comers to test their audio and musical theory skills. We'll be using our knowledge of sight reading, placing notes, and the ability to memorize some tunes to pass this puzzle. Afterwards, feel free to write your own little jingle. Just don't expect it to perform anything lively. Anyway, this game is great. It's so delicious and moist. Think of all the things we learned. Fans of Sierra games will feel right at home here with the high level of quality they produce. Expressive graphics, cute distractions and quotes, and appropriate music. Really can't go wrong here, even if you don't like puzzle games. The only downside is the length. It can be completed in one sitting, especially breezing through novice difficulty. If you want more, please check out Castle of Dr. Brain, the prequel to this. Later titles also were developed on Windows to further the Dr. Brain series. Thanks for joining me on this trip to the island of Dr. Brain. I've had my fill of this place, so I'm going to go head back home now. See you next episode of Retro Island Gaming. See ya!